In this video, we'll examine a strategy to consider when dealing with quantitative comparison questions that involve variables. To set this up, consider the following question. Now one possible way to solve this question is to use the strategy we examined in the last lesson and perform certain operations on both quantities. So we might begin by subtracting 4x from both quantities to get this. Then we can subtract 4 from both quantities to get this. And finally divide both sides by 2 to get this. At this point we're comparing x with 1. And since x can be less than 1, greater than 1, or equal to 1, it's clear that the answer here is D. Alright, now let's examine a different approach. For this approach, let's plug in different values for x and see what happens. Now keep in mind that when we're comparing quantities involving variables, we're trying to determine whether the relationship between the two quantities remains the same for all possible values of the variables. So for example, in order for the correct answer to this question to be A, it must be the case that quantity A is greater than quantity B for every possible value of x. Similarly, in order for the answer to be C, it must be the case that quantity A is equal to quantity B for every possible value of x, and so on. Now when we plug in values for a variable, we want to use a nice cross-section of numbers, and we want to use numbers that make it easy to evaluate each quantity. A nice set of numbers to choose from are 0, 1, negative 1, 1 half, negative 1 half, 10, and negative 10, since they represent a nice cross-section of all numbers. Let's begin with 0. If x equals 0, then we'll plug 0 into the two quantities, and then evaluate to get the following. Since quantity b is greater than quantity a here, we know that the correct answer must be either b, quantity b is always greater, or d, the relationship cannot be determined. This is a great feature of the plugging in numbers approach. After very little work, we can quickly whittle the number of possible answer choices down to just two. At this point, we'll try another value of x. Let's try x equals 10. If x equals 10, we'll plug 10 into the two quantities and then evaluate to get the following. So when x equals 10, quantity a is greater than quantity b. So in the first case, quantity b was greater, and in the second case, quantity a was greater. Given these contradictory results, the correct answer here must be d. We cannot definitively say which quantity is greater. Now, it's important to note that the main drawback of the plug-in numbers approach is that unless we get two contradictory results, as we did here, then we can never be absolutely certain of the correct answer. Here's what I mean. Let's say that we didn't plug in 10 for x. Instead, let's say that we plugged in 1 half. If x equals 1 half, then the two quantities evaluate to be 7 and 8, in which case quantity b is still greater than quantity a. What if we try plugging in negative 1? If x equals negative 1, then the two quantities evaluate to be negative 2 and 2, in which case quantity b is still greater than quantity a. At this point, we might incorrectly conclude that quantity b will always be greater than quantity a for all values of x. So let's try another value of x. What about x equals negative 10? In this case, the two quantities evaluate to be negative 56 and negative 34, in which case quantity b is still greater than quantity a. At this point, we might be tempted to say that the answer is b since it appears that quantity b will always be greater than quantity a for all values of x. Now, of course, if we plug in a value like 10, we can see that the answer is not b. If x equals 10, the two quantities evaluate to be 64 and 46, in which case quantity a is greater than quantity b. And given these contradictory results, we can now be certain that the correct answer must be d. So when it comes to plugging in numbers for the variables, the drawback is, if the strategy does not yield two contradictory results, then you can never be 100% certain of the correct answer. On the other hand, this strategy allows you to quickly narrow the answer choices down to two options by plugging in only one value. As such, this strategy provides you with a great approach to handling questions when you don't know how to proceed. 
for example. Consider this question. This is a very tough question, and most students won't even know where to begin. However, since there's a variable in one of the quantities, we might consider plugging in some values. Let's begin with zero. If x equals zero, we'll replace x with zero and evaluate to get the following. Since quantity A is greater than quantity B, we can automatically take the four possible answer choices and reduce them to two. The correct answer here must be either A or D. So in a matter of seconds, we can give ourselves a 50-50 chance of guessing the correct answer. Let's try another value. How about one? Well, if x equals one, then we'll replace x with one and evaluate to get the following. Once again, quantity A is greater than quantity B, so perhaps the answer is A. Now from here, you might wish to plug in additional values of x, or if you're running low on time, you might just guess A or D and move on to the next question. Now if you decide to plug in more values and you get contradictory results, then you can be certain that the answer is D. Conversely, if each result keeps showing that quantity A is greater, then it's quite possible that A is the correct answer. At this point, the choice is up to you, depending on the time you have remaining in the test. Now, before I end this lesson, let's see if we can solve this question in a more definitive manner. Let's begin by subtracting three from both quantities. When we do so, we get the following. Now, why did I do this? Well, notice that we can now take quantity A and factor it as follows. Now, as an aside, if any of this looks unfamiliar to you, don't worry. We'll cover factoring in a future module. Now, from here, we can rewrite quantity A as x minus 5 all squared. Since the square of any value is always greater than or equal to 0, we know that quantity A must be greater than negative 1, which means the correct answer here is A. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that if there are variables in a quantitative comparison question, we might consider plugging in values. We learned the main drawback of this approach and the main benefit. And finally, we learned that if you do plug in values, be sure to use a nice cross-section of numbers.